My name is Tom Hansen. I'm a reporter for Channel One News. My goal has always been to shine a spotlight on things that need global attention. Millions of dollars worth of crystal meth. Open air prisons. Cocaine or heroin or what do you use? Both of them mixed up. Can Iran be trusted? I've spent the majority of my career reporting and producing stories on global conflicts. <laughs> humanitarian efforts. Maybe in one hour time, you know, everybody will die, you know. Environmental crises, drug wars. We're headed to the site where one of these vigilantes was killed. Journalism is about connecting with people and good journalism shapes our world. Panko works all hours to document the bloodshed of Mexico's street war. He wants the world to know about his country's plight. It's normal, normal that there are these things. There could be a homicide here and people will continue walking. They'll keep walking? Yes, like nothing happened. Each day, he sees beheadings, executions, and other acts of violence on the streets of Acapulco. There could be a crime there. Mexico's war on drugs began almost 10 years ago, and ever since, the death toll has soared, outpacing the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq combined. When Felipe Calderón took over as president, he had a philosophy, and that was he was going to crack down on the cartels. But what he did is, his efforts, in conjunction with the efforts in the United States government, created a vacuum in leadership in the top of all these cartels. All the cartel leaders were getting arrested. To date, more than 160,000 people have been brutally murdered. But even more disturbing is the number of people who have just disappeared. They're called Mexico's missing. Él es mi hermano. Él está secuestrado el 5 de julio del 2012. All Mario Vergara has left of his brother is this photograph he wears around his neck. He was kidnapped three years ago. Just one of several hundred cases in the southern city of Iguala. With no help from the Mexican government, he heads up into the mountains each day to search for mass graves. He's found 100 so far in a space smaller than a football field. The more that they work, the more mass graves they find, which would suggest that, you know, they're only scratching the surface. And with miles of mountainside left unturned, he doesn't expect that to change anytime soon. Mario's waiting for the day he's reunited with his brother and can lay him to rest the right way. We heard the Tamador, the local military, was searching for two American journalists. So we had to sneak our way into the camps. Duck, duck, okay. We're ducking through police checkpoint. That's where we met Jack. But IDV has no money to run a these market. He used to be a student at the local university when the violence broke out in 2012. Along with more than 100,000 Rohingya, he was relocated to what can only be described as an internment camp or an open-air prison. Allegedly, these makeshift villages were supposed to be a short-term solution to the conflict, but he's been living here now for four years, and the government won't allow him to leave. For us, we have no free and movement. We have no options inside of the camp. He showed us around. This is a room for five. For five family members. So we have to stay here inside of uh, the room uh, all together, male and female. And we quickly learned life here is pretty bleak. Limited food supplies, virtually no economy or job opportunities, only one small school, but probably the most crippling thing, no medical access. Many healthcare issues that could uh, easily be solved it can in some cases be life-threatening. For a woman that's pregnant or is, has gone into labor, uh, that can be the difference between life and death. The government has kicked out the vast majority of aid groups, including MSF. People can't get the health care they need, so they're suffering, even dying. Are you able to care for your family? No, they want to you know they Oh my gosh. 
adding to an ever-growing number of graves along the remote waterfronts of the camps. Shockingly, the government, led by Nobel Peace Prize laureate Aung San Suu Kyi, won't acknowledge the Rohingya as an ethnic minority or even as legal citizens, leaving them with no rights and no one to advocate on their behalf. We have no options here. No one can rescue us. No one can give a voice for our community. But Jack Hope's media attention will further the cause for basic human rights in his community. As we left the camps, I couldn't help but feel a sense of guilt. The people here were stuck in a perpetual and vicious cycle of suffering, but I could leave. <laughs>